I think one of the things that, that we have to note as well is, is that we keep hearing that the government's going to give these small businesses, is going to give them something. <laughs> it's not the government's to give. That's the people's money. What we are talking about is allowing hard-working people to keep a little bit more of their money. In other words, for the government to take less of their money. But when we talk about that, we hear that, oh, it's horrible because it's going to cost government. We're going to be giving away these things. Excuse me? Giving away? I think that's part of where we have a huge ideological difference, yeah. philosophical difference. It's not government's money to give away. What we're saying is that government is going to take less money of the small business person, of the small business. It's going to take a little bit less money, just a little bit less money. Take a little bit less so that that person, that small business can reinvest it in their business. And you mentioned some, some great examples to create more jobs. And I know that for some people, that's a theory. It's a theory. Why do we have to create more jobs? Let's just criticize the president. They've done that from day one about every issue, whether it's the war against, uh, you know, the war to liberate Iraq, they criticize the president. They don't criticize him that much anymore, but they sure were criticizing him because it's the thing to do, just criticize the president. Now they criticize this job creation plan, and they say that it's, well, we're going to give these people, these small businesses, uh, money. No. What we're saying, and what the president is saying, is it's the people's money. It's not government's money. Government should allow those, those small businesses, those individuals, to keep some more of their money so that they can use it back home in Florida, in Minnesota, in Texas, in Wyoming. And they tend to do it much better than we do, than government does, because we tend to waste a lot of money. Uh, allow them to keep some of their money, and that will create 1.2 million jobs in one year. But I guess some people say, well, it's only, only $100,000. You know, it's only $100,000 that we're going to cut. It's only $10,000. It's only $1,000 that, that, uh, that, uh, that businesses are going to be able to reinvest. And I guess they think that they have better plans for that money in D.C. But I, I'm frankly a little shocked. I've been doing a little bit of research, Congressman, about some of the waste up here. And our dear friends on the Democratic side hate when we talk about waste and fraud and abuse. But I've been doing just a little research. I haven't spent a lot of time on it. As you know, I just got here recently. But I found some very interesting things. Just one issue, for example, government uh, purchase cards and travel cards wasted approximately $97 million annually. But let me tell you what are some of those really bright things that we should take more of the people's money for. This is the kind of thing that we need to tax people more for, to spend it on some of these things. This is $97 million worth of Escort services, Jewel, jewelry, clothing from Victoria's Secrets, Macy's, Nordstrom, Calvin Klein. <laughs> Taxpayer money bought a dog for an individual. Uh, Taxpayer's money was spent on pornography for some employees, on expensive luggage. <clears throat> there was one incident of one dinner for $2,100 at Treasure Island Hotel and Casino. That's why we need to raise more taxes. Take it away from the hardworking American men and women. Bring it up here to D.C. so we can spend it and waste it on some really good things such as this. Designer leather goods from prestigious store. Lego toys. Expensive sunglasses. Beer, wine, and cigars. There's also, remember the travel cards? That's a separate issue altogether. That was used for, well, for uh, interesting places, I don't even want to mention what some, some of these things I'd really rather not talk about, including some gentlemen's clubs, some plastic surgery, down payment on a home. So that's why we have to tax the American people more, because Washington knows how to spend the people's money better. Oh, yes, on down payment of a home for a member of the, of the bureaucracy. That's why we have to take more of their money on cruises. No, 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 no. Wait a second. <laughs> The reason that some of us, you and others, have been speaking about waste, fraud, and abuse is because it's not a laughing matter. Because this is hard-earned money. This is money that government takes from the American people and then misspends it. And government does some really good things 
with taxpayers' money as well. But we throw a lot of it away. And for anybody to say that government is so efficient, so well run, so lean and mean, that we have to take more of the American hardworking people's money, people that are having a hard time because the economy is not as good as we would like it to be, then we need to take more of their money to spend it up here as opposed to what we want to do, which is allow them to keep more of their money so they can spend it on some of the issues that you mentioned, on their families, on creating wealth within their businesses, of creating more jobs within small businesses, I think is absolutely ludicrous. And, but these examples are not new. You've been hearing about uh, waste, fraud, and abuse for a long time. So, so again, how does, and, and, and I'm, I'm having a hard time, I know that you, like, like me, believe that we need to incentivize this economy. But since you've been here longer, maybe you've heard some of the words of wisdom from the other side stating how raising taxes on hardworking Americans, particularly when they're having a hard time, helps create jobs. I don't buy it. You know, I don't buy it either, and I agree with you as it relates to the people out there creating jobs, hardworking families know a whole lot better how to spend money to create jobs to provide for their families than we ever will here in Washington, as your many examples just proved the point. And, you know, amongst the wisest words I've heard here was uh, during my freshman year, we had an, a, a speaker come in, uh, George Will, who some of you may have had the opportunity to read his columns. And he, he tried to make things understandable for us, because sometimes it is hard to understand some of the verbiage that you hear. And he said, you'll find that on most issues that the battle of ideas is between freedom on one side and, and people telling you that you need them here in Washington to keep bringing the gravy train to you, or, or said another way, dependency. You know, we're going to cultivate dependency. And if you listen tonight, uh, you've heard that. You've heard the other side say, you need us here because without us here, we won't be able to keep you dependent on unemployment rolls. Whereas I think what our statement is saying, yes, we'll take care of unemployment, and yes, we have extended, and we both voted for that, and we both will again when that need is there. But that's not our main focus. When we get up in the morning, our focus is how can we give the economy more freedom, small businesses more freedom, families and small businesses more of their hard-earned dollars in their pockets so they can take that freedom and they can go out and create jobs and create a more prosperous America uh, for all of us.